Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson, and it's a Monday of Houston week. Texas Tech takes on the Houston Cougars, 2.30 p.m. Central Time, Saturday, here in Lubbock at the Jones. And uh, I think it might come as a surprise to, to many that the Red Raiders are favored by 10 points over the Cougars, uh, despite the 1-3 record from Texas Tech. And I had the recap uh, Saturday night, but uh, I thought after Monday, after uh, Coach McGuire, uh, Tim DeRuiter, the defensive coordinator, and then Zach Kittley, the offensive coordinator, after their press conference on Monday, I thought I'd just kind of, there's there's been a lot going on, so I thought I'd, I'd recap some things. Uh, Tyler Shuck does uh, have a fractured uh, fibula, uh, and he's going to be out. I mean, I think he's going to be out for the, probably the whole season. You know, the guy's been very unlucky, uh, needless to say. Uh, three seasons uh, here at Texas Tech, three significant injuries, uh, two to the collarbone, clavicle area, and they were different injuries in as many seasons. And then this year, of course, that gruesome leg injury in, in which he was carted off uh, in, at the end of the first quarter against West Virginia. So um, Coach McGuire did confirm all those things. You know, six to eight weeks is after his surgery, which is supposed to happen on Tuesday. Uh, but then I think there's a rehab and all kinds of things that go in. So, I mean, I, I would I would not expect Tyler Shuck back this season. So it is the Baron Morton show. And uh, there was some concerns because he got kind of banged up against West Virginia as well in that 20-13 to 13 loss out there in Morgantown last weekend. But, uh, you know, he, McGuire did say, that he's ready to go and that he's going to play. I mean, there was two questions. There was a question asked right at the beginning of the press conference uh, by another media member, and then I followed up like, you know, did he get banged up? Is he good to go? And McGuire did kind of dance around that question a little bit, but he he did say that he a lot of the guys were banged up, including Morton, but that Morton is expected to go. He's expected to start uh, this weekend. So it's important to note that Jake Strong, a true freshman at a Justin Northwest High School in the Metroplex there in the kind of the Fort Worth area, uh, he is the, the next man up. He is the second string quarterback. And he hasn't taken, I mean, he's a true freshman, so it makes sense that he hasn't taken a college snap yet. A uh, lot of experience at the high school level. and It's a it's a high classification that Northwest plays. They play good competition. Um, and he put up a lot of yards. I really like his arm. He looked good in the spring game. He's looked good from everything I've seen in practice, but it hadn't been, you know, hadn't been live football. So, um I asked Coach Kidley how the uh, reps will be divvied up, and he did say, you know, Morton will, will receive a lot of the reps with the one, of course, and he had been receiving some, of course, with Tyler Shuck, but then now Jake Strong is going to get some of those reps with the ones just in case so that he's ready. So, uh, you know, th that's your one, too. He said uh, Will Burns is another true freshman quarterback on the roster, and he's going to be running scout quarterback. So, and then McGuire said there's some guys like uh, Coy Aiken is a receiver, has a really good arm. He said he might actually have the best arm on the team, uh, which is interesting, but that, uh, you know, he could be an emergency quarterback. And then some guys like Miles Price were mentioned. Um, I'm trying to think about who else, but, you know, after, really after Jake Strong and definitely Will Burns, you start getting into, you know, Todd Brooks and the Wildcat, which some people may like. <laughs> Uh, they may want that, but uh, quarterback situation definitely has taken a hit with obviously with Shuck's injury, and then uh, you know Morton being banged up. But good news is, is he does look like he's going to start against Houston this weekend. And speaking of quarterbacks, a familiar face, uh, Donovan Smith is coming back. Who uh, he won some big games the last two years that went over Iowa State, and with in which Jonathan Garibay uh, kicked that long field goal to win and got Tech Bowl eligible. Uh, last year against Texas, actually against Houston, ironically, he had a overtime uh, run for you know the game-winning touchdown against the Cougars. But now he's on the other side of the field. Coach McGuire said that they could not have uh, things could not have been, I guess, you know, classier. That that uh, Smith couldn't have been classier in terms of the way he transferred in their conversations with whether he should stay or go look to start somewhere else. And that he's a big fan of him. Um, and, you know, his family. Of course, Donovan transferred here for his senior year uh, high school and uh, had a really good season at local Friendship High School. Uh, a lot of uh, Texas Tech administration and coaches throughout the years, their kids have gone through the Friendship School District. And um, Donovan Smith was certainly one of those who had a, you know, I saw him play in person a couple of times this senior year, and he was fantastic. Um, you know, 
he has had mixed results so far at Houston. Uh, he's not really like a high percentage passer, but um, he's a gamer. You know, like I said, he's won some big games for Texas Tech when he was here, uh, and he's going to look to win another one in the Jones. Uh, but this, of course, this week on the other side of the field. So that'll be interesting. Dana Holgerson coming back again, but you know, we're going to have all kinds of preview material, but. Uh, I wanted to recap some things and asking the coaches. I, I asked Coach McGuire, I said, do you, when you're listening on the headset, like in that those final four uh, downs against West Virginia, um, you know, can you step in and say, hey, I want to run Taj, for example, uh, in this? And he said, absolutely, that there's been a couple of times where you say, hey, I want to get Jaron Bradley the ball here or, or, you know, stuff like that. But that he liked those four calls and that when he heard it called and he said that just the execution wasn't there. And then also you got to tip the cap to West Virginia who made a couple of good plays. So uh, I asked Coach Kitley about those those four plays as well. Um, I said, you know, why? Why not stick with what got you back in the game, what was working? Why not? run the ball with Taj some. He said, in hindsight, yeah, he should have run the ball once or twice, having two timeouts there and where they were. And, and, and you know, there was enough time and that it worked um, that he should have run Taj at least once or twice. But he also felt good about the four plays called and uh, that, you know, they need to execute. So I personally think they should have run the ball. And I've said that in so much content, uh, podcasts, the previous video. Um, I do think that the plays were there. There were some guys open. They didn't execute, but I just feel like Taj was, uh, you know, kind of willing Texas Tech back into that game, and uh, West Virginia hadn't shown an ability to stop it, and you would like to see him get one or two uh, carries at least uh, in, in that spot, especially given the fact that your passing game, whether it be drops from the receivers, the weather, whatever you want to throw out there, the quarterbacks being inaccurate, the injury to quarterback uh, Tyler Shuck, um, the pers- the completion percentage was terrible. The passing game which was not good, and the running game is what was working. But that's what they did. That was Kidley's answer, and I wanted to share that uh, with you all after the the press conference. Uh, Ask Coach Der- Deruder about the penalties. You know, there's four defensive penalties that uh, gave West Virginia first downs, and he said basically it was just guys being either lazy or getting beaten. And uh, instead of playing good technique, reaching out and grabbing and holding it, they had told the players in practice when they saw him doing practice, like, you were going to get called for that in the game. And sure enough, they did it again in the game, and it was called, and it was costly. So he said they're going to have to just use better technique. And I'll have stories on all this, um, written stories, but uh, I wanted to post a video and um, just kind of talk about some of these things uh, that, that are important. But Tech is really banged up. already had an injury report. It's a free story on Inside the Red Raiders. It's already posted as well. Uh, we're going to have tons of content, uh, rapid fire, um, we'll have the mailbag later this week. I'll be exchanging questions with Rob Sellers over at our, uh, you know, our, our cousins, our cousin site at the, uh, I think it's Coog's Digest, I think it's what it's called. I hope I have that right. But the uh, 24-7 Sports Houston site, we've been exchanging questions for years. And we're going to do it again. I think I'm going to be on his podcast as well. Uh, and... I don't know, there's going to be so much, you know, we'll have the hump day chat. We'll have so much preview content. I'll have stories from Kitley, from DeRuiter, uh, from McGuire doubling down. That's another thing. He doubled down on the, uh, he was asked about, you know, his um, offseason comment that he felt that this current team was two touchdowns better than last year's team. And he said he doesn't shy away from that, that they're not performing at that level right now to beat last year's team by two touchdowns. But in terms of talent, and what he thinks the team has, he feels like this team is that much better. So that really points to just how poorly the team is executing from the head, you know, from the head coach all the way down, you know, to the players um, playing bad football penalties and in some cases turnovers and you know as we've talked about a lot, bad offense. But like I said, look for all that content moving forward. That's just the uh, Monday recap from the press conference. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.